Hey, I'm Matty AP, and this is my daily tweet. Hey guys, welcome to The Daily Tweet, the show where we look at the hottest trending moments on Twitter. We choose three of them to talk about each day, and at the end of the episode, we choose one of them to tweet about. Now before I get stuck into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button, it really helps me out a lot. Can we hit 400 subs by the next episode? I reckon we can do it. You guys are killing it lately. And just a little bit of a heads up, I'm wanting to release these episodes of The Daily Tweet a lot earlier from now on. Um, so let me know what you think when they start releasing earlier. I'm not sure if today's going to be an early release, um, but let me know what you think if it works better for you guys. I'm just keen to hear your thoughts. But that's enough about that. Let's get into the heckin' episode. So first story of the day and of the week. Uh, Nate Nanza, the commissioner of Overwatch League, on Friday announced that he's leaving Blizzard for a new opportunity. ESPN later confirmed that Nanza will be joining Epic Games to oversee esports at the Fortnite developer. Fans and experts are now weighing in on what Nanza's move might mean for Fortnite, uh, which has had its share of struggles recently. Now, look, I'm going to breeze over this, uh, th this story because it's not something that overly interests me that much. And I don't know if most of my viewers are big esports fans either. Let me know. Are you big e I need to know. Are you big esports fans? Let me know in the comments below. But look, I know people love that shit. Um, this dude, as far as I'm aware, is responsible for the Overwatch League and how it's kind of played out over the years. But Fortnite's only really new to the esports scene, really. In in the I mean, they've got the World Cup at the moment, which is offering a shit ton of money. But look, as from what I'm hearing, Fortnite does have its struggles in the esports scene. So look, I don't know whether uh, Nate Nanzi here has been paid a shit ton of money from Epic Games, which look, Epic has the money to throw around. We know that much. Um, so I don't know if they've kind of done these ones his way or if maybe he just wants a change and he sees an opportunity at Epic uh, to, to, to build something up there. Not too sure at the moment. That's all we kind of know about the story. I'm going to leave it at that, but let me know what you think. Is this something you're excited for, Fortnite players? Let me know. I want to hear your thoughts. All right, next story. All right, now a little bit of a follow-up to a story we had late last week, I believe Thursday's episode. Um, Moby has released an apology on the on the Natalie Portman memoir thing that he that he had going on. Uh, if you if you didn't catch up with the story last week, Moby released a, uh, a a memoir, and in the memoir he did say that him and Natalie Portman, um, like fifteen odd years ago, had a brief romantic brush, um, where they brush a brush with romanticism, something like that, where uh, where essentially they dated, they courted for for a short amount of time. Now look, it does seem like. Um, that maybe Moby thought there was more going on than what there actually was because Natalie Portman, after uh, that 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 excerpt from the memoir came out, she hit back instantly saying, uh, no, that's not true. Uh, it was nothing. And she actually went, uh, went, went as far to say he seemed just like an older, creepier man trying to hit on her. Um, so, and then, and then Moby doubled down and said, hey, well, you know, I'd be ashamed too if I was... We well, did. He didn't say it exactly like that, but he said, um, I wouldn't overly want to say that I dated me either. So a bit of a feels bad from Moby. But look, anyway, with that, Moby has now released an apology. Okay, so look, A News here uh, on Twitter tweeted out the excerpt here or the, the, the perfect quote here from what Moby said. He said, it was truly... Uh, it was truly inconsiderate of me to not let her know about her inclusion in the book beforehand and equally inconsiderate for me uh, to not fully respect her reaction, Moby. Now, look, it's funny because he doesn't actually say, sorry, like I wasn't telling the truth because she's saying it's a lie, essentially, or whatnot, what he said. Um, but he's not saying it. was. He's just apologizing for not letting her know it was in the book. Look, that's the main thing. He probably should have hit her up first and said, hey, you cool with this? But he didn't, and that's where the backlash has come from because he didn't check first. So always check, always check before you put your romantic, previous romantic uh, love stories partners in a book. If you write books, um, let me know in the comments below. Did you write a book about romantic? Anyway, fuck. <laughs> All right, exciting, exciting news. I'm pumped on Monday. Why am I so pumped today? I don't know what's going on. Uh, Sonic director announces the movie release is delayed. They're delaying uh, the, the Sonic movie, which is good because look, that if, if you haven't been keeping up with the story and look, it's been a couple of weeks now since the, the, the shit storm that was the Sonic movie trailer released. Uh, but you can see here, if, if look, if so, I don't know where you would have been hiding, but this was what Sonic looked like. And if you know anything about Sonic, Sonic does not look like this. This is not Sonic the Hedgehog. This is some sort of freakish, um, monster that, that is before us here, uh, that, <clears throat> um, 
I don't know what it is. But look, if you haven't, if you didn't follow the story, the Sonic here is what they first showed in the movie trailer. Not actually what Sonic looks like. Um, I mean, the movie apparently he does, but in 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 canon terms, this is not what Sonic looks like. So the internet, being the internet, backlash uh, came after, um, and the director of the movie said, you know what? You guys hate this shit. We're gonna turn. We're gonna roll it back. We're gonna we're gonna redo Sonic. We're gonna make him how you how he should look, how everyone expects him to look. So that means all the CGI artists are gonna have to be hard at work because the movie was supposed to release, I think, the end of this year, uh, late this year. Yeah. Um. So so they obviously got a lot of work on their hands to redo all of the the scenes with Sonic in it to make him look like the OG Sonic that everyone expects. But obviously this is gonna be pretty intense on the CGI artists. So it's good to know that they're gonna be rolling the release date back um, to give them a little bit more time to get the job done, which I think is totally fair. I think that's, uh, that's a good call. Um, now look, the thing I'm hyped about here is they release this, uh, this little, this little doodle here. This, that sounds bad. This little picture here, um, of, of Sonic, Sonic's arm holding the, the, it's one of those signs, you know, if you played the game where he runs through the little checkpoint at the end of the thing, it spins around the fa Anyway, you know, what I'm talking about Sonic fans out there. Um, but it says here the date, uh, the 14th of the second 20. So it comes out uh, next Valentine's Day, which is very exciting. So all the all the romantic, maybe Moby can, anyway, I don't want to go. <laughs> uh, this might lead to more books or something. But the, the exciting part, if you haven't already noticed here on the picture, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog uh, is holding the sign, um, but the, the, the hand is the OG glove. Of Sonic. I mean, if you look at, if you look up here, Sonic's not wearing gloves in the movie. Uh, he's wearing, he's just got white hands, creepy little hands. Um, but it looks like they're kind of hinting that they're going to be going back to the old school original Sonic look with the with the gloves and everything. So very exciting. A little bit of a hint there that they're going to be making uh, good on their on their claim that they're going to make sure Sonic looks right for the movie from here on out. So very exciting times. That is that. So not much more news on that for the minute, but but uh, mark it in your calendars. Um, due to release next Valentine's Day, make sure you got yourself a, a nice guy or girl for the for the for the screening, or go by yourself if you, if that feels bad. Uh, third story. Wait, third. Wait, one, two, three, four. Fourth story of the day. Out of five, by the way, pray like Matt. Don't you do only look? I probably should have explained this already. I only do three usually, but there was a few things that went down over the weekend, and I couldn't let them go. So I'm just going to quickly talk about them uh i hope you don't mind um but but fourth st fourth story of the day the new call of duty is called modern warfare now for non-call of duty players this might be like well, what's where's the story matt i can't find it whether whether devil is it well it's right there in front of you if you just open your eyes because uh call of duty 4 was actually named call of duty 4 modern warfare so look in a very battlefield-esque um, way of the confusing titles. Obviously, they had Battlefield 1, which came out after a million Battlefields had already been out. Um, Call of Duty thought, fuck it, let's just do the same thing and confuse everyone by releasing uh, a game with the same title pretty much as a game that's already released and call it Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Um, so that's, that's the story there. Now, a few people here are saying it's somewhat of a franchise reboot because in a way, Call of Duty has gone very much futuristic at this point. Uh, I know they rolled it back to um, World War II in one of the previous ones. What was the last one? What was the last? What the shit was the last one? Oh, it was the bloody... It was Black Ops, wasn't it? It was Black Ops 4. Look, they've pretty much done every era, including well into the future that they could do at this point. Um, so look, I'm not surprised if they are doing a bit of a soft reboot and taking it back to the modern warfare, maybe back to somewhat of its roots. They went way back to World War II, which was all right, um, but it was pretty far back. Now they're kind of bringing it back to the modern kind of age, which I think is totally cool. I'm, I'm totally fine with that. Let me know what you think. Are you excited for the next Call of Duty? Do you think Call of Duty is kind of a bit dead? I still enjoy it to some degree, but I fall off very quick now after they release. So a bit of a shame, but let me know if you're excited for it. And what do you think? What do you think about the title? Is it going going to be confusing um let me know in the comments below jesus all right for the fifth story of the day that's right the fifth story jesus this is a big one um the live action akira adaption will officially open in 2021 i'm so pumped i love akira but god if you haven't seen akira definitely check it out this is a cult classic film uh honestly this 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 movie still holds up to this day when did it come out this this originally i have the original here you obviously got it if you're a true anime fam you got to own some bloody akira 1988 so a year after i was born very exciting um but yeah 1988 film 
still holds up today. The animation is incredible. Um, it's all hand-drawn cell animation. Incredible shit. Um, <laughs> incredible stuff. Um, definitely suss it out. Um, but um, in a maybe exciting story, there's a live-action film coming. Now, if we can learn anything from Ghost in the Shell, which, I look, I didn't see the live adaptation of Ghost in the Shell, but... Uh, which is obviously goes to show another uh, anime film, I guess, around the same era, probably a little bit uh, later than this. Um, but that that didn't do too well. A lot of anime films don't really always translate well to a live adaptation. Uh, I'm trying to think of one that maybe has done well thus far, and I can't think of any, so that's not too good. Look, maybe Akira will be different. Um, I think it could be a movie that does quite well as a live adaptation. In my opinion, it doesn't need to be made into a live film. I don't know if you guys agree. I'm keen to hear your thoughts below. I don't think we need to turn anime films that are beloved by many into live action films. I think they hold up on their own as the films that they were originally meant to be. So it says here the adaption of Katsuhiro Otomo's cult classic from Japan will hit cinemas in May 2021. It says here produced by Leonardo DiCaprio, Leo DiCap is back in this film. I didn't know he was an Akira fan, but there you go, very exciting. And produced by Taika Waititi. Um, I hope I said that right. Hopes are high for the ambitious project. Now, apparently, uh, Taika Waititi, hopefully I'm saying that right, dude. Uh, apparently, he was the dude that also directed Thor Ragnarok. Excellent movie. One of the only Marvel movies I've actually seen. I loved it. Um, so there you go. In that respect, this movie could be good uh, but the movie is slated to start production in july this year so very exciting times uh i guess it's something to look forward to hopefully i do a good job i'm looking at you taika take taika waititi get it right um anyway so those are your stories for the day you cheeky little devils uh now all we have to do is write a tweet on one of them and send it off into the twitterverse let's get on it all right, so the tweet I've decided to go over today is uh, based on uh, Akira's live adaptation releasing in 2021. I wrote, the live adaptation of Akira is slated for a release in 2021. Fingers crossed they get the casting right and have Danny DeVito play one of the espers. Now, if you don't know what the espers are, they're these little um, old people children that have psychic abilities. Um, I just feel like Danny DeVito would fit the role perfectly. <laughs> oh my god and with that that is my daily tweet yeah i think it is bam <laughs> guys thank you so much for hanging out with me today i really appreciate your company make sure if you like the video uh you click the like button if you didn't like it make sure you hit the dislike button let me know what you think i'm keen to hear your thoughts but hey make sure as well you hit that subscribe button really helps me out a lot let's see if we can get to 400 subs 400 of you beautiful subscribers uh, by next episode. We can do it. We're so close. But thank you for even getting me uh, this far along in my YouTube journey. You guys are killing it at the moment, so I appreciate it. Uh, if you want to interact with the tweet that I just put out there, um, feel free. It's in the description below. Uh, make sure you like, retweet, uh, or even comment on it if you feel inclined. I appreciate you for it. And while you're over on my Twitter, make sure you hit that follow button. Uh, it helps me out a lot. I don't know really how. It just gives me more clout, I guess. Um, but if you do, I'll give you a little shout out at the end of tomorrow's video. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out. I appreciate you. Have a great evening. And I'll catch you all in tomorrow's daily tweet. See you there, baby. Bye. <laughs>